Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. I hope everyone had a fantastic holidays and it's super light this week, but there were a few things I thought I would just cover if you have kind of a spare 10 minutes. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, comment and share. I did a couple of new videos last week, um, being lazy like uh, most other people, hopefully. I did a clarification video about the big changes to certification. A few people had the same question, which generally means I didn't explain something very well. So I did a little clarification video. Then I did a fairly deep dive into the new template specs, a way to actually think about storing and managing Azure Resource Manager templates. Now this first party, first class resource actually in Azure. So you can go and take a look at that. In terms of Azure updates, um, Azure Monitor for AKS private clusters is now in preview. So remember with a, an AKS private cluster, there is no requirement for public facing IPs. Essentially that communication between the worker nodes and the management plane is all using uh, private endpoints. So there's no external public connectivity. Azure Automation now has Python 3 runbook support. So if you go and create a new Azure Automation runbook, you'll see the old Python 2, and you'll now see the Python 3 option. In terms of ARM templates, two features hit general availability. Um, firstly, what if? So what if is the ability to say, hey, what would happen if I was to run this template? You just add the what if at the end of the command. And for example, it would say, hey, I'm going to change the storage account from this to something else. Um, we could actually jump over and see that quickly if I fire up VS Code and we jump over. So what I'm going to do here is just run an ARM template deployment. I'm going to use the what if parameter. So you can see that here. And all I'm doing is I'm using a parameter file that specifies a different type of storage account than currently already exists. So this storage account has been run already, but it's going to go and check, well, what is it currently deployed as? What is this template deployment telling me it should be? And it's going to tell me the difference between them. Now, because I'm doing what if, it won't actually change the type of the storage account, but it will show me the things it would do. So here you can kind of see, well, the what if is telling me, hey, the SKU name would change from LOS to GRS. So that's the whole point of kind of that what if functionality. It lets me see, well, what will happen if I continue with this? So now I can do that with ARM templates. That's a very common thing with PowerShell in general. Also, deployment scripts have hit GA. Now, you might wonder, well, what's a deployment script? We already have kind of this custom script extension. And the way we kind of think about this is obviously we have our ARM template. Now, in our ARM template, we define certain types of resource. Now, absolutely, one of those could be, for example, a virtual machine. And a child of that, I could have a custom script extension that lets me run a script inside the resource it creates. So I would run this, it would create the virtual machine, then it would attach the custom script extension, and whatever script I specify, it would get executed inside that virtual machine. Which is fine, but what if I just need to run some script to run some arbitrary set of actions that I don't want to run inside the VM? Maybe I'm not creating a VM. Maybe it's the last mile part of my deployment. Maybe I'm updating a database. Um, maybe I'm thinking about uh, deploying a Kubernetes manifest file. I'm updating some records. So what we can now have is this is a first class part of a template. And I can actually now have a deployment script. So within here, I would have kind of a deployment script. Then that deployment script could point to kind of a URI to actually have a script that I actually want to get executed, or it could be kind of inline script, or I can do inline. 
And what's going to happen is whatever code I pass that deployment script capability, it's actually going to go ahead behind the scenes and use an Azure Container instance. So it's going to be running Linux, which means I can use kind of CLI, I can use PowerShell, and it will run whatever that script is in that Azure Container instance. It also uses an Azure Storage account um, to, to make everything fit together. And then once it's finished running, it will get destroyed. So this deployment script is the ability to, hey, that last mile piece of code I need to run to finish the overall deployment, I can now do that inside of this new deployment script resource. Again, yes, there's still the custom script extension, there's still run command, but that does stuff inside a VM I create. This is actually just running some arbitrary code I have that I need to finish off my overall deployment. And if you actually look at the documentation, it actually has some nice examples. So if I jump over and look at this, it talks about using these deployment scripts in the ARM templates. We can see the resource type here is this deployment scripts. It goes through some examples. Hey, create an object in Azure AD, add users to a directory, perform some data plane, copying stuff around operations. Talks about various permissions um, you might need. Now, you don't need to use a managed identity with this unless it's actually going to run commands against the Azure API. So if I actually want to run commands against Azure, then yes, I need a user assigned managed identity because it has to run as something. But if it's just running commands against non-Azure, I don't need a user assigned managed identity for it to run as. Now it's got some sample templates. And as you can really kind of see, the type is this deployment script. Then you're telling it, hey, I want to do Azure PowerShell, but it could also be CLI. And then if it's operating against the Azure RESTful endpoint, then yes, I'm going to need a, an identity to use. And then it's, hey, what am I going to do? There's some variables, there's a script content. So this is actually passing it in line, or you could also pass it that URI and pass it the script to run. And kind of it just goes through some examples. Here's some inline scripts that's doing various things. So you can go and take a look at these. But again, the whole point of this is to finish that last mile. Yes, great, I've got my JSON file that creates all my Azure resources, but there are some commands I want to run to finish off the complete deployment. Well, now I can use that deployment script to really run anything I want. And again, it's stood up in this temporary environment that will get destroyed once it's finished that execution. So again, very different from custom script extension, which is to run things inside a VM I'm creating. Also miscellaneous, so Azure AD has confirmed that from the 1st of April, April Fool's Day is an unfortunate date, but I don't think it's a joke. Um, the SLA will change to 99.99%. So they're improving the SLA of Azure AD. So that goes along with a number of other improvements they're making around Azure AD. Obviously, Azure AD is critical for things to function. They're doing more things around better isolation between the different fault domains. They're doing things like backup authentication for a number of services. Um, use managed identity as much as possible. Think about continuous access evaluation so I can have longer token lifetimes. So if there is a blip in the access provider, my tokens last a bit longer. But to make sure they don't do bad things, I can have this continual evaluation of, well, is this token still okay? Has something happened that I should revoke that um, from being used? Things like um, SharePoint, uh, Outlook do that today. Also, they've released this Azure AD Sensitive Operations Report. And this is really all around kind of the, the SolarGate uh, incident. Because through that SolarWinds Orion back door, that sunburst back door, it does a number of types of activity if you've actually had this attack happen, if you've um, had this intrusion. So what they've released is an actual um, workbook that will go and look at your Azure AD instance and look for signs of the activity this actually performs. 
So we can actually jump over and have a look. So if I go to uh, my Azure AD instance, and if I go down and look at monitoring and look at my workbooks, what you'll see is this down here under troubleshoot, you'll see this sensitive operations report. So if you open up the sensitive operations report, it's looking for these five different types of activity in your environment that are basically signs that you've had this breach, this backdoor has been used in your organization. Because what it does is it looks for kind of application service principles that have been modified. It looks for your federation settings that have been modified. It looks for modifications to refresh tokens, um, other types of service principle outside of directory sync. Looks at new permissions granted. Looks at various roles and group membership updates. So you can go through and actually just look at this, run each of these items, and it will actually give you a fairly good idea if something's actually happened in your environment. So it's worth just going and firing that up, it's free. Um, go and look at that to just maybe get a, a feeling of confidence that you, you've not had those types of activity happening in your environment. Uh, the Azure Security Center has a new alerting experience in preview. So this is a shift that's now, hey, the alerts are part of the Azure resource graph. This gives me improved filtering capabilities. It lets me actually run resource graph queries directly. So once again, if we jump over and look at this, so I could absolutely just start here in the regular portal. And what we could do is if we go and look at our security center and we go and look at our security alerts, we can see our regular alerting experience. But you'll see this, hey, look, preview available. And what I can do is if I select this preview, it's going to jump me over to this view. So you can see it's kind of a, a new look, a new feel. You can see that, hey, active alerts by severity. You can see the sort of blue pills. We have these various filters and I can modify these. I can add my own filters. Here you can see the add filter. And here I could add a filter, for example, on maybe the type of attack tactic that's being used. I see these different types of attacks. Maybe I just want to see privilege escalation, um, maybe execution. And now I can see those. I can also see here and say open query. So if I select open query, it will now show me a resource graph query to actually go and if I run that, I'm going to get the same results back. But now I could use that in other areas in my own code, really whatever I want to do. Now, sometimes it can be difficult to test. Um, are my alerts firing correctly? Does the flow work correctly? So we now have this option to create sample alerts. And if I select that, you can select, well, which of the types of intrusion, fake alerts do you want to generate? around different types of defender depth service. And I can say create sample alerts. And it will then fire off. You can see I've done these before. Now, it does tag them with sample alert, but everything else about them will seem legitimate. It will flow through the same alerting path. It will show up in Sentinel. It will actually let you go through. If I kill off this filter, um, they're gonna start firing um, in my environment. You can see it's running here and they're going to show up and I'm going to get those new types of alerts actually showing in my environment. If I change it by the time, so they're not showing up yet, but these are when I ran this a couple of days ago, you can see all these different types of alert that it generates. I could go and select any of these. Notice it says this is a sample alert but it's giving me the details of what it is, the type of attack it is. I could go and view the full details of this, all the related entities, and it just helps me go through and really test um, different things in my environment. So that's really the goal about that new security center set of capabilities. And finally, they've added some new services um, to the free uh, kind of subscription. So if you do a free subscription, you get it's $200 of credit for the first month. 
then a whole bunch of services that are free for 12 months. Then there are some that are free forever. So what they've actually done is they've added some new services um, to those free. And I, I've got the link, I'll put that in the description. But there were some things around, I think kind of there's some, uh, the VPN, there's some capabilities there. VPN gateway, the load balancer, service bus, container registry, archive storage. And so there's some increases around Cosmos DB, I think as well. You can go and check that out. So there's some new stuff that's free for 12 months. So those are the updates. Um, again, it's fairly light, but I think this SLA is a, is a pretty big deal. That, that's kind of been improved and a lot of the things going on behind the scenes to enable that new SLA. And also that sensitive operations report and getting those insights into the alerting. Um, so, so that was it. Um, I hope everyone is having a great holiday and relaxing. This is my uh, MS Paint ugly sweater. And until next week, Take care.